los padres o un adulto responsable. What we're going to do here is recount the life of Camilo Torres. Camilo was a priest from an upper middle class Colombian family who ended his life as a guerrilla fighter in 1966. I'm here in the grounds of the National University of Colombia in Bogota, where Camilo, in the early 1960s, a student chaplain in the university, underwent a kind of uh, conversion to the revolutionary cause. Camillo was the first priest who took sides in the revolutionary uh, struggle against the ruling classes. In fact, he was the first major figure in modern times who took this step as a Christian. Camillo's story is told here by some of the people who knew him best. Many of them are, are big names in their own right. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, for example, the novelist, some of whose first writings, incidentally, were published by Camillo in the student page of a daily, uh, daily newspaper in Bogota in the 1940s, when the two were studying law together. You'll also see Alfonso López Miquelsen, today's president of Colombia, uh, Luis Villar Borda, who is a longtime friend of Camillo and is today leader of the House of Representatives, Álvaro Gómez Hurtado, a recent presidential candidate and, and leader of the Conservative Party, and so on. All of these people played their part in, Col in Camillo's drama and play their part still in Colombia's story today. My own part is more that of observer. In 1969, Doubleday of New York asked me to write the biography of Camillo, and I've been living in Colombia since then. The fact of having been a Catholic priest myself for many years and having lived for over 10 years in Latin America as a priest uh, gave me, I think, a certain insight, a kind of identification with Camillo's problems. And also, of course, familiarized me with Colombia. Colombia is maybe the least known of all the countries in Latin America. Uh, despite its size, it's much less known, I think, than Venezuela or Peru or Mexico. Since independence from Spain in the early 19th century, Colombia's history has been a long, unbroken chain of, of civil wars fought between the two traditional political parties. And the cannon fodder for these wars has invariably been the peasantry, kept in ignorance and virtually living as serfs. In the 1940s and 50s, some 300,000 peasants were killed, a case of mass fratricide which is unequaled in any other Latin American country in the 20th century. This time, the Colombians didn't call it civil war. They called it simply the violence, la violencia. This exceptionally violent period begot a series of armed resistance groups which degenerated later, some of them into bandits, simple bandits, while others formed genuine guerrilla armies. And then in the 1960s, under the influence of the Cuban Revolution, new guerrilla groups appeared, notably the ELN, the Army of National Liberation, which was and is a Castro-type group that was formed in 1964. Many of the leaders of the ELN were students, and Camillo was one of the first to join them. I think it's very important, therefore, to see Camillo as the product not only of a of an historically violent situation, but also of a moment in the history of Colombia and of Latin America in which many people were seeing guerrilla warfare as a genuine solution to the political problem of power. To some people, uh, it seems a bit difficult to explain this um, upsurge of guerrilla groups in a country like Colombia, which is traditionally democratic. Unlike with most or many Latin American countries, there have been very few military dictatorships in this century in Colombia. Instead, the ruling classes have maintained control, but by means of um, parliament, parliamentary institutions, with the result that many Colombians, in fact, really believe that they're living in a democracy and are genuinely represented in the government. Nonetheless, the basic facts of Colombia are no different from those of all the other so-called underdeveloped countries in Latin America. The dependence on the United States, the absurdly unequal distribution of wealth, and an army which uh, has a tremendously high uh, portion of the national budget and which is employed in the repression 
as if it was a, a kind of police force in the repression of uh, popular unrest. In other words, looked at very closely, the Colombian democracy is seen to be a very superficial veneer. And Camillo, who was a professor of sociology here, was very aware of the fact. Camillo was not only a sociologist, he was also, and above all, a Catholic priest. And Colombia is a very Catholic country. Uh, the Catholic Church here has always been a political factor, traditionally um, on the side of conservatism and reaction. Therefore, Camillo's uh, break with the church and his revolutionary stand must be seen against the background of, on the one side, a very authoritarian hierarchy, and on the other, of a church which was feeling in the early 60s the impact of Pope John and the Vatican Council, in other words, of a great renewal. Even so, Camillo's action was an unprecedented break with tradition. It paved the way for politically left-wing priests like René Garcia, whom you'll see in this film and who is one of the founders of the so-called Golconda movement. And it made of Camillo, along with figures like Che Guevara, one of the heroes and symbols of the revolution in Latin America. Juan XXIII sacó a flote una crisis que ya venía por dentro en la Iglesia a partir tal vez como de 1930, donde había ya una nueva concepción teológica.